Hi, I'm Mandy Pryor and welcome to Spotlight on Pittsburgh. Spotlight on Pittsburgh is a program about Pittsburgh's most fascinating people and what they do to make Pittsburgh an amazing place to live and work. When we come back, I'll introduce you to our first guest, Patricia John of Heffern Tildson. Patricia is here to share with you the secrets of reaching financial success in 2018. Our family was drifting apart until we found a connection. You have the power to change your child's life. The Boys Town National Hotline can help. Hi, Patricia, and thank you so much for coming on. How are you? Good, Mandy. Thanks for having me. Of course. So, can you tell me a little bit about what you do? Well, I'm a financial advisor with Heffron Tillotson. We do very comprehensive financial planning for our clients to help them reach their financial goals. And so, um, what do you like about your job? What do you like about doing what you do? Wow. Well, I love what I do because I like being able to help people and I like being able to bring understanding and clarity to financial problems and questions and futures for our clients. And so, if I came through the door and I said, oh my goodness, my finances are out of whack, I don't know what to do, can you help me? What would be kind of the first step that you would, you would tell me to do or what would you help me with? Well, you know, that's interesting. Um, I like to think that you can't really know where you're going till you know where you are. So the first thing we would do is help you get control of where you are right now. Some of the things that we think are important, you know, and usually the beginning of a year is a good time to start this. Do your budget. Most people don't have a budget. Um, I, I think the statistic is only about 35% of people actually adhere to a budget. And when I say that to people, a lot of people say, ah, I'm not gonna do that. So if you can't do a budget, at least make sure you have everything, all of your spending, all of your expenses, have it on, on a paper, on a document, so that you know what you are putting out every month. Look at a budget, look at your insurance, look at any investments that you might have now, make sure that you're properly allocated. All of these things are good to take a look at at the beginning of the year. Um, so we can look at all of that and then we can move forward and see what makes the most sense for you as an individual. And um, do you, what do you think holds people back from getting in control of their finances? People are very intimidated by it. Some people are very intimidated by what they have or overwhelmed. You know, recently we met with a client who said, I don't know what I have. She had mountains of paper. She didn't think that she was prepared. What she found out was she was far more prepared than she thought she was, but because everything was in a different place, in a different drawer, and she didn't know what she had. So it's kind of like going through the process of just writing everything down, knowing so, what you have, and then you can kind of move forward. Move forward, move forward, get some clarity. And we help with that. And then we put everything in t together in what we call our master plan, where you can take one plan and see what your net worth is, what your insurance plan is, what your investment planning, estate planning, and we put it all together and we help you use that as a guidebook for your future and we work through that with you year after year. And so um, with Heffron, like, who are your typical clients? Is it more, you know, families and, and, and friends or is it more businesses and corporations? We at Heffron, uh, we manage money for anyone, for lots of different people. My team and I manage, uh, we have business owners, we have friends, we have people who, um, we like to say that we work best with people who we like and who like us and who need our help and want to have a collaborative relationship with us. So whether that's someone who owns a business or someone who maybe is a widow or uh, just wants someone to help them and we like to work with those people. 
And you also give good advice on insurance too, correct? We do work with insurance and we do comprehensive insurance evaluation and then we look at what your insurance needs might or might not be. And um, so overall, are you helping people more with investments or just getting a hold of their day-to-day -day, or is it kind of a... We do investments, everything? but we use the, our master plan as the guideline for that. So once we have everything in line and we know what you have and you know what you have and we know where you want to be, what your risk tolerance is, what your timelines are, what kind of expenses you have and what your financial needs are, then we put your investments in place and we monitor those investments and make sure that they are right for you. And we stay with you throughout the course of your future. Well, that's good. I think, I think a big, big part of people going to a financial advisor, a firm like Heffron, is that they're afraid to do it. They're afraid not only to just have somebody go through their finances, but they're also a little intimidated with letting people, you know, kind of exposing people to maybe that they haven't paid enough attention or that they, you know, just kind of overlook it for other reasons. So that's true. That's very true. Not everyone is like that, but there are a lot of people who, who think, well, I don't have enough money to talk to a financial advisor or, um, geez, they're going to see that I have papers here and there and I'm not really sure what I have. Well, that's part of our job is to make sure that you're comfortable with what you have. And that's what we do. We want our clients to be comfortable. We want them to understand what they have and where they're going. And that's part of our process. And, you know, I like, we, we walk along the way with you. And what would you say is the um, number one bad habit that you wish everyone would break? Like what is the, you wow. know, everybody comes in, they have a, a habit that maybe kind of goes across the board. You hear it a lot. You're like, I just wish they would just, you know, do this instead. That's a, that's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough question. Um, maybe relax a little bit about, and, and I don't mean relax in that you don't see what you have, but know that you can have clarity with what you're doing. A lot of people are, are, are just so nervous about their finance, finances still. Um, I don't know if that's a bad habit, but that was a tough question. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and I know that some, some of the businesses that you work with, um, you work with different size businesses as well? We do, we do. I could say our, our Heffron Tillotson as a whole, manages money or 401k plans, retirement plans for some very large businesses. Um, my team, we do mostly smaller businesses, but um, 401k plans for, for, through our corporate services, uh, we, we have a, a great team that, that can manage corporate um, 401k plans and so forth. And um, there's going to be big tax changes this year, correct? Yes, yes. There are some tax changes, and you know the tax changes have affected some corporations already, so that they are talking about giving back to the employees. They are giving bonuses to employees. They're giving pay raises to employees, and some of those tax changes are going to be um, go back to the investors in the form of higher dividends. So it's there's going to be some changes with with tax returns, but that's something that's pretty specific to each individual. And uh, we'll, you know, we'll see what happens with that. But already it's affected, it's had a positive effect on a lot of uh, corporate earning sheets. Well, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody wants to have positives when it comes to taxes, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So is there anything else that you would want to share with businesses um, in terms of even small business, medium-sized businesses that will help them um, get a better hold of their finances and look to the future? Well, you know, every year we say, what should we do this year? What should we do this year? And I think one of the things that's important to remember that investing is a long term. So sometimes what happens in that one year is not the most significant, doesn't have the most significant impact on a person or a business's portfolio. So we need to look out to the future, three, five, seven, 20 years, 
and make sure that we are constantly looking at what we have, where we're going, making sure that we have our investments structured properly for our tax situation, and you know, talk to an advisor who can help guide you on those things. And so is there anything else that I haven't really touched base on that you, know, you would give advice to or a tip or something that has helped you along the way, especially when it comes to maybe um, household finances? Well, I think you know, start this January, start this year by pulling everything together. And again, as I said in the beginning, we can't know where we're going to. We know where we are, right? And that, I think that makes sense but especially in, in your financial future. So use January to pull all of your information together. Make sure you've looked at your insurance policies because a lot of times um, we're not sure what we have. Pull that together. Put them all in a file together. Pull together all of your bank accounts, your, your investment accounts. See what you have. Consolidate if you should consolidate. Look at your bank statements. Credit cards. You know, oh. a lot of people. A lot of people we see have um, credit card debt that they didn't realize they had interest rates. They're paying interest rates that they didn't even know. Bring it all together and take a look at what you really have. We can help with that. We have a lot of tools that we can help guide our clients. Most important, again make sure you know what you have and where you're going with it or where you want to go. And um, that way you pave a very clear path for your future. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I'm gonna bring you out in a little bit with Rob. Okay. Thanks for having me, Mandy. Of course. To get additional financial support, please contact Heffern at the Cannonsburg location to set up a consultation. Uh, when we return, our very own associate producer, Rob Costanza, the growth coach Three Rivers, will give you his success strategy for 2018. You don't want to miss this interview. Sometimes it's hard to see where you're going, but you have the power to change your problems. All it takes is courage. Your life, your voice, dot org. Hi, Rob. Hi. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me I back. I shouldn't even say the show because it's kind of partly your show. Actually, it's being, mostly my show, but that's okay. Yes, being associate producer and all. Yes. So what's new? I mean, it's been a while since you've been on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're a, you're a business coach, so I'm sure you're dealing with a lot of different businesses and helping them. Yes. In 2018, it's a big year. Yes, it is. Um, so what, what, what can you share with us? Well, um, my business has evolved, which is great. We want all businesses to evolve, right? Um, so it's evolved because I'm finding a better depth of what people are really wanting and understanding. And what is the clue and the key to being successful? But it all is a common thread. And that's what's the journey that I've been on, being a growth coach, has been fantastic. Because I've been able to understand more and more what really motivates people. And so I'm excited to continue to work on those skills to help people grow to that one thing that's most important to them. I can tell you now, but then I'd have to kill you. So, <laughs> I was uh, going to say, exactly. what is the it's one thing that secret. makes you successful? Actually, the one thing is, is clarity. And Patty was just actually speaking about it uh, previously, about how it's so important to have clarity in where you're going. Because, yes, you need to understand where you are today. That's where it starts. And so when I work with my clients, whether it be an individual client or companies that I work with, you have to have clarity of where you are today. And you have to face the reality of where things are so you can put a, and craft a destination, which is your vision. And that's where we want to go. So that's really the most important quintessential tool that most business owners, entrepreneurs, and people really have. And so what is a typical client for you? Typical client really is it's a nice range. It's a nice range. I can work with the small business owner, the individual business owner. Um, but works, what works really well is the small to mid-sized company that wants to create that vision for the company because it works in all aspects of the business. I can work with the business owner. I can work with the person who's charged to think more strategically about their business. But what's nice, I, it has collateral effects on each layer of the business. For example, I can work with their management team, making sure that their management team has a good cohesive structure on the company's vision. 
And then I can work with the sales team, for example, so that they're out there and they're, they're, what they're portraying to the customers and to the clients is also in alignment with the because vision of the company. Because you have a vast background in sales as well. I do, I do. Most of, my, most of my background is actually in sales. Even though I've had extensive background in training and development, uh, that was always a subset of all the positions that I had in, in co my corporate life, so to speak. Uh, and that was in sales. Yes, I started my, most of my career and spent about 20 years in sales and sales management. And then I kind of always drifted into a, a uh, training and development piece with that. But yes, I'm a hardcore sales guy. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I think it's a pretty important aspect of business is sales. Absolutely. You, you hit the nail on the head because, you know, if you look, I did some, as I did my reflecting over the, uh, the holidays, I took about 10 days to reflect um, because I couldn't go outside. With Just the, wasn't all eggnog <laughs> and cookies? <laughs> well, it could have been, <laughs> but it was really too cold to go outside and do anything. So I, I took some time to reflect and it always comes down to sales. When you think, when you hear and you talk about business owners and you hear and talk about entrepreneurs, you know, there's people management issues. There's all these different issues that are very, very important to, to companies and to businesses. But it always comes back down to revenue and growth and driving sales in your business. In fact, you know who um, Kevin Harrington is? Of course we know who Kevin Harrington is, right? The original Shark Tank guy. Of course. Yes. Kevin says that there's one skill, one skill that an entrepreneur and a business owner should have. It's the ability to sell because it's about influence, influencing a customer to make a decision. So selling is the quintessential number one skill for every business I'm going to throw you off for a minute right now. Yes. So if you had any invention that you would like to present on the Shark Tank, what would it be? <laughs> that actually is a, a very good question. It probably would be not related to sales. <laughs> um, but I'm actually thinking about turning my, coming up with my own show. Uh, really? Yes. Yes. And what would your show it's be It's going to be about? called the Guppy Bowl. Okay? The Guppy Bowl. Instead of the Shark Tank, Guppy Bowl. Oh. Nice. You're just totally making humor. that up. I know. It's not, not going to happen. So, but yeah, actually, that's a great question. A great question if I was to come up with something. But I'll have to get back to you and give you another reason to have me back on the show. That's true. Mm -hmm. So um, moving forward, mm -hmm. um, you do small team workshops, individual sessions, and then I know that you've been seen in and around Pittsburgh, correct? Yes, in disguise. No, I think you're pretty much on the main stage, aren't you? Yeah, I'm trying to be, yes. Yeah. Yes. And so um, where can people see you coming up? Well, I have lots of things. Obviously, there's my Facebook page that I have, the Growth Coach Three Rivers Facebook page. I do um, some webinars and I do from time to time some Facebook Lives to give some insight into some hot topics and some different things that are going on. Um, I do have a workshop coming up. And oh, guess what right. that workshop is going to be on? Um, what invent? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sales. <laughs> Perfect timing, right? Beginning of the year, you want to give your, your sales team or your sales for your company a boost of energy, a shot in the arm. Well, that's what this workshop is going to focus on. It's called the Seven Secrets of Sales Success. Say that five times real fast. I can't. I neither can I. I. <laughs> but that's okay. Seven Secrets of Sales Success, right? And it's going to focus on how you're going to grow your business, how you're going to grow your customer base. How are you going to inject life into your sales so you can gain revenue and prosper as a company and as a business? And I've taken pretty much my 20 plus years of sales experience and all the sales coaching and training that I've done and all my certifications and I've kind of condensed it down to these seven secrets. So uh, it's going to be great. What are the seven secrets? Um, once again, if I tell you, I'd have to kill you. So we'll, well we leave don't that. Want that. Yes, yeah, see some suspense for the workshop. Yeah. But it's going to be great. And it's, uh, I'm having it at one of my usual locations at the Chrome Federal Credit Union down on Racetrack Road. They have that beautiful conference room there. 9 a.m. on February the 21st. Okay, good. So I encourage anyone, anyone, whether it be a business owner, whether it be a sales manager, or whether it just be a sales rep or a sales team, come together collectively as a team and come there and learn these seven secrets. And you can apply them and start growing your business and cultivating customers and closing business and all those fun things that sales brings. And so um, it's a sales workshop mm -hmm. and you will be... Having these people come in, they'll learn something. I believe I've heard there's some networking going on as well. So yeah. you're going to expand their leads. Absolutely. Maybe they can practice a little bit while they're there, right? Absolutely. Well, you know, so. that's all my workshops um, are structured with a networking component because it's always great to network. The more that we can build our sphere of people that we know, the better it's going to be. So rather than just have people come there and listen to me for two hours, which I know they'd really love to do, 
I kind of cut it off at about an hour to an hour and a half because I want to give people a chance to network and to practice their 30 second commercials, their value proposition statements, which is equally important for what they do. So it gives an opportunity for learning, for growth, for networking, and maybe finding some new leads. And um, in addition to your, your workshops, you're also a keynote speaker presenter? Yes. That's sort of a, a passion of mine. I love to be in front of groups. And ever since I was in corporate America, I've always taken the opportunity to speak in front of our national sales team or a national organization. So I love to get up in front of groups and talk about... That's hard for being. a lot of people to do. It is. Especially with you know a good message that's yes. getting out to them and mm -hmm. effective. It is. It, it, and it's... It, it's something to overcome sometimes for a lot of people, but there's ways to overcome it if you're really passionate about something that you're doing and a purpose that you serve, it makes it a lot easier. And just for an example, where else have you sp um, spoken? I've been uh, the Pittsburgh Business Show. Uh, I was a, a guest speaker at the Pittsburgh Business Show last year, the first annual one, and I'll be a, a guest speaker again this year at the second annual Pittsburgh Business Show. Um, I've spoken, have you ever heard of the, the Impex Convention? Sounds really familiar. The Impex Convention is a convention where all of the inventions that you see on TV, they all come together from all over the world and they present their inventions. You know the George Foreman grill and all that stuff? Yeah. That's where that all started. So all those little things you see on TV, all those inventions, they all come to this convention and I've been a, a key speaker at their last two conventions. I mean, I think I don't know whether it's the addition of Amazon being oh. how convenient it is, um, but I've, I've definitely kicked it up a notch on my made on t made for TV purchases of just oh, stuff so <laughs> of, uh, yeah. well there you should see some of the stuff that's there it's pretty incredible yeah I think only they say about only 10% of all maybe even 5% of all the inventions that are in that convention actually make it to 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 market well we had um, we had somebody who did an invention on the show before mm. if you can recall um, how did that go Susan Castriola she she was fantastic she brought in this Cucina safe plate and it covered your food and when you heat it up anyway it was it's great you should look it up if you don't have one. food is good I'm listening food is good food and you don't have to clean your microwave after that's like the big thing so <laughs> um, so what else what it, what are the tips that you can share with our audience today mm. on having a successful 2018 well I think it's what I what I mentioned before and even what what Patty was mentioned previously is really come to terms with what you want where you are today um, and come to terms with facing the reality of what your current situation is and, and look within yourself and look in the mirror and, and, and ask yourself the tough questions. Once you do that, then you can really clearly define where you want to go and where you want 2018 to end up or to 2019 to start. That's really where it begins. So as long as you have the reality of today and the vision of tomorrow, it makes it so much easier to craft your goals. You can craft your goals and you put your goals into place because that's really what, how you get moving forward is creating those two and connecting the dots with the goals. So I would say that would be the most important easy tip without getting into a lot of details, but that really is quintessentially the, the art of the strategic mind. The strategic mind is basically facing the reality and ending up with creating your vision and goals. And is there anything I didn't touch on that you would like to discuss or talk about or... No, I mean, I think you did a fantastic job today. <laughs> uh, very, very impressed. You're too kind. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, it, I, I just, coaching is something that, that, that we all need. And sometimes we don't realize it. Um, but when you think about it, the very best of everything, the very best business people, the very best athletes, the very best of everything, if there's one common thread that all of them have, it's they have coaches. They have people there that are holding them accountable, helping them cultivate their goals, helping them be their quote unquote GPS to reach their dreams. And that's what I do as a coach and that's what I love what I do because I'm there to help them realize their dreams and, and be there every step of the way to hold them accountable. So when they get to those goals, it's just a great, great, great feeling. Well, thank you so much, Rob. I will be bringing you back out momentarily. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Rob, as always, for coming on. Contact Rob to get your own custom strategic workshop for you or your team, or check out his upcoming workshop. We are heading into a commercial. When we come back, we'll have Patricia and Rob return to give their final tips on how to make 2018 your best year yet.
Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented, mostly by making changes in your diet, controlling your weight, and of course, by not smoking. Visit prevent50.org and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, and more. Well, Patricia and Rob, I have you back out here because you are leading everyone who's watching into success this year. Just you two, so no pressure. Um, <laughs> I wanted to see basically how somebody in more of a financial mindset, I mean, you work with sales, you work with businesses, mm -hmm. how that can come together and work together. I mean, what do you think it is about finances that helps with your, your clients be successful as well? Well, it's very important that part of the strategic, when you're being strategic about your business, you have to know the numbers, right? You have to know all those strategy components of revenue and growth and numbers part of the component. I always tell my clients that the more that they know their numbers and the more that they're in touch with that, the better their business, the acumen's going to be. So obviously finances is a huge part. In fact, I touch upon that in some of my workshops. I go into a whole financial implications component where they have to have, those are some of the core competencies of just being a good business owner. Um, yes, having a great mindset is one thing, but also being able to apply that mindset to the core competencies of your business, your marketing strategy, your selling strategy, your people management strategy, your financial strategy, and things like that. So somebody like Patricia could, you know, potentially take off a lot of the stress and the worries I think that a lot of the businesses have um, when it comes to finances that they aren't addressing. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and what do you think, um, somebody who's teaching the skills of, of organizing and getting mindset and strategy and could help you with you know, being a financial advisor and giving I great I think advice. that's a very important uh, skill. Organization, structure, uh, even sales. And I, I think you mentioned earlier, no matter what we do, sales are involved, no matter what we do. The bartender is a salesperson, mm -hmm. you know, your, your newspaper delivery person is a salesperson. But the organizational skills are very helpful to us as advisors because if we're organized, it's better for our clients. You know, we can we can help them more clearly, and it's good for our clients as well. Um, so, helping us as advisors have clarity in our lives. You know, if we don't have that, how does that help our clients? Yeah. It's true. I mean, for the person that I am, I'm definitely more of a creative person, and. You know, I'd love to spend way more time doing a design than I would love sitting there and doing my finances. Mm -hmm. um, I've gotten much better, but um, <laughs> how do you get somebody like myself, who's more of creative, who's kind of pushes it, you know, it's it's never as high up on the, the priority list to say, hey, take hold, pay attention, get organized. I think... I think that's a hard thing to do. I think that's I think that's really interesting because people always say, well, you know, you either have a, a math brain or a creative brain. Um, I don't think that's really true because I am uh, more creative and I segued into this. So when I see my clients, and that might be a lot of my friends too because they have that more creative personality, that when they have clarity around their finances, then it gives them a lot more freedom to be creative. Sometimes it takes a little tugging. Let's get this together so that we can move clearly on that path that I mentioned before. But people who create, who are creative are at their most creative when they don't have all kinds of other clutter going on Absolutely. in their, in their heads. Yep. Well, thank you both so much once again for coming on. And I, I think everybody out there is going to, Think a little bit more about getting organized and, and setting a plan into action for 2018. Thanks, Mandy. And thank you, Mandy. Thank you. Thank you once again for watching Spotlight on Pittsburgh. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Spotlight on Pittsburgh and join us next time when we shine the spotlight on two new guests. I'm Mandy Pryor and thank you for joining us for another edition.